Hey guys, my name is Turner Sutton. I'm a Northwest portrait photographer here in Northern Idaho. And uh, I'm here to talk to you guys today about how we organize the photos that we take. Uh, for me, I have two different sides of, of you know photography that I take. I have the photos that I take professionally with my actual camera. Um, those that I spend a lot more time in, I edit afterwards, I, I do a special export and I throw on a hard drive. And, and so those are organized in, in a way that I'm definitely not gonna be talking about today, but in a way that um, doesn't make sense to kind of talk about. What we're here to talk about is, is the photos that I take on my phone, that we take on our mobile devices. Um, the photos that we organize a little bit differently in our lives because they can just get thrown into the Photos app that we have on our phone. Um, they can get lost into you know all of those, those thousands of photos. I have probably around 3,000 photos on my phone um, just from family memories and family times and, and all of that fun stuff in the moment kind of shots. And so today we're going to be talking about Google Photos and the advantage of using this software and getting and implementing it into your life. Um, so first off, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the desktop version. Now I have my iPad here and I have my phone here as well to go ahead and give you different platforms that this can be used on. Um, it is web-based, which means that you can use it with any browser. You can use it with Safari, Chrome, Firefox, etc. You can also download it as an application on your tablet or phone. Not on your computer, but on your tablet or your phone. Um, super, super awesome, super easy to use. It's very easy. This shouldn't take really honestly too long, and you, it definitely shouldn't go over your head. But if you have any questions at all throughout this, just let me know, and uh, we'll, we'll go through. But first off, it is on a Mac. It is on Apple devices. It shouldn't differ from Apple to Android that much. I looked into it. It looks very, very similar. And so don't let that worry you. It's, it's pretty much the same. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn to my computer here for a second. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you the fact that it does load up here on Safari. And I'm going to go ahead and go to google.com to find it. This is the primary way that I've, I've noticed that you can find it, just because you can come over here to the library of applications and scroll down to Photos and select it there. But once you've gone to this once, all you have to do is type in Google Photos and it will take you right back to this page. Um, so really quickly, I'm gonna go ahead and start with the layout of how all of this works. It's super standard to how most photo organizing softwares are designed. It's meant to make it easy, quick to the point. You don't have to spend a whole lot of time in here. Um, so over to the left here, we have the Photos tab, the Sharing tab, Print Store, and then how your library is organized from the albums to the utilities that they've implemented. Um, if you archive a photo because you don't want it anymore or if you totally delete that photo and throw it in your trash. Um, so the storage of Google Photos works on a, an upgradable system and so it starts off with 15 gigs with which the photos that you take on your phone, that's actually quite a bit of, of storage space. Um, from the professional photos that I uploaded here, just to show you how you can organize them, it's only taken up to 108, and those are a little bit more hefty in file size. And so you can probably get quite a few photos out of 15 gigs, I wouldn't worry about it too much, but it's only $2 a month to upgrade to, I believe it's 100 gigs after that. I'll even come over here and, yep, so for 100, 100 gigs, you can do $2 a month, and 100 gigs is way more than you probably need. Um, you, you obviously get more bonuses as well that I haven't looked into personally, but super cheap and 200 gigs. If you double that, it's only three bucks a month. And so really price isn't, isn't that big of a deal. Um, the photos app or the photos section, what you're going to land on is the first thing that you will see. You will be able to upload photos really easily straight through here. Now on a desktop, you're probably not going to be uploading too much unless you take the photos from your phone and then take them to your computer and then take them to Google Photos. What I've noticed uh, myself doing for softwares like this is just downloading the app on my phone and, and, and going from there. Um, so the way that you upload, if you were to do it through your desktop although, is there's a little button right here that says upload. You just select that button. It asks if you want to upload it from your computer or another software service that Google offers, which is called Google Drive. Um, if you wanted to up upload it through your computer, you just select that and it brings up whatever you know uh, finding software that you have on your laptop. For Apple, it, it opens up Finder and allows me to just select through the photos if I have them organized on here. Um, you can also take your Photos app or if you had a thumb drive plugged in or anything like that, you can actually just take the photo and drag and drop it in there. And so if I were to 
for example, open up Finder here and head over to one of my photos, photo shoots that I've recently done. I'll come over to Tucker's if I can find it. <laughs> Let's see, I, I've done a few. Here we go, yep, Tucker's. And so we've got his export and then I can simply just drag and drop. It's going to take that photo, upload it, and be done with it in just here a few seconds. And I have slow internet here in, in Athol, unfortunately, but there we go. It uploads the photo, gives me a couple of options of what I can do with that photo afterwards, but we'll get to the albums here in just a minute. What I want to talk about first is what you can do within a photo. And so when you select on a photo that you just uploaded, it's going to take you to kind of like the full screen view. Um, there's a few tabs and a few options that you can mess with over here, starting with your share icon. And so it gives you an easy way to just take this specific photo and, and do your share options, which I'll talk about here in a minute. You can also do a quick edit. And so if it's a little underexposed or if it's not quite you were, what you were looking for, this has already been a fully edited image. And so I'm not going to do anything to it, but just to show you what it could do, you know, you can bring up the brightness or enhance the color or decrease it and make it black and white actually really really useful tool um let's see where is the done button here right there hiding from me on my photo there okay the third option is going to be a magnifier just, just another option to zoom um, actually works really seamlessly for an online web-based software so it's super super cool um, but just kind of one of those things that you'll use from time to time nothing to worry about i'm going to go ahead and skip over this option because i'm going to come back to it um, the favorites tab, so you can select specific photos that you think are your favorite throughout you know, the year or throughout certain events. That way you can get back to them really easily. And then if it isn't a photo that you want in your catalog and you maybe didn't mean to upload it or didn't like it after a certain time, just trying to kind of clean things through, you can delete the photo. It will go into your trash. You confirm that you want to delete it and you can delete everything at once there. Um, or you could simply archive the photo. And so if you were to head back over here, there is an archive section. If you were to select archive, it's going to show you all the photos that you weren't quite ready to delete, but you wanted to archive for some time to maybe go over it one more time or, or just kind of organize it a little differently. Um, but if you go back to that photo, let's go ahead and bring it up. I have made it black and white now, so let's go ahead and undo that. Just bring it back to the center here and then bring the light back to the center and click the done button. Okay. And then the three dollar, the three bots. Wow, well, the three dots always means more options. You just select on it, and it gives you another selection of options that you can do. Uh, first off, if you had a selection of photos that you wanted to show somebody, you can look through a slideshow. That way, you can download. It shows you the quick command on how to download. If it wasn't rotated correctly, you can quickly rotate it there. Um, if you wanted to, another way to access adding a photo to an album is just using the more options there and then it also allows you to just directly order prints from this option on a specific photo as well um let's see i don't like how it switches there but um the i option is what i really wanted to talk to you guys about because it uploads the information of that specific photo okay this photo is taken on my mirrorless camera my sony ilce 7 and mark ii it's shot with an 1.8 aperture at a thousandth of a second shutter speed on a Zeiss 55 at ISO setting of 500. It's going to tell me all this information because of the fact that I took it on that camera and that's the information that this camera records. But what it also tells you is that this photo was shot on September 20th, Sunday 6.01 p.m. Which is really cool because the photos that you take on your phone are going to record that same information. They're going to give you that same information and when you upload it to Google Photos, it's going to transfer that information as well. And so all of your photos that you upload are going to be organized by when they were taken automatically. Uh, if you didn't have the location on when you were taking that photo, a lot of mobile phones automatically do that as well. But if it wasn't like that and you wanted to be super organized, this is where you would add the information to location. You would just click this button right here, the edit button, enter it in. So this was actually taken in Spokane, Washington. I just typed that in and boom. Spokane, Washington. You can be as specific as you want with an address or anything like that. And then right here, it actually auto-identifies faces and it will start to 
provide you with a searching option to find everybody with this face. So say, say Tucker and 15 other people were in my catalog, but I wanted all the photos just of Tucker. It's going to give me that option to just search his face. But the most important thing is description. So I'm gonna go ahead and say this is, I'm just gonna go ahead and put Tucker's senior for portraits. Senior portraits. And so now the description of this photo is Tucker senior portraits, to which I will be able to also use as a method of finding the photo later on. So now that we've covered all of these options, we've covered the more option that gives you a few different options to go from there. Pretty straightforward, you know, not too complicated there. The next tab is the sharing tab, one of my favorite uh, uh, offers that this service provides. Because of the fact it allows multiple people to collaborate onto a single entity. And so if I wanted to take an album, if I wanted to go ahead and go, um, let's go ahead and go to albums real quick. I have an album built right here for Tucker, but actually, let's actually create a new one. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to create a new album. You click create album, just up here on the albums tab. You title it, this is for a test, just like that. And then you go select the photos that you want in it. I'm gonna go ahead and just select a few random shots here. You click done. And your album is created. So now your collection of photos is there. If you were to come back to sharing, it's not going to show you anything obviously still because this isn't where you start the sharing process. You're gonna go back to the album that you want to share with multiple people. You click on it. And this little share icon here in the corner is going to give you the ability to start that. Now, if you want to click create link, let anyone with the link see photos and people in this album, you click create link. And so now anybody in that, that has that link can view the photos. Not necessarily anybody can contribute quite yet, but they can view the photos. If I were to click uh, for a contributor, I could invite somebody to contribute to the album. And so for example, you just, Either search them by name if you have them as like a friend on Google or phone number or email. Most people have Gmails nowadays and so most people already have that auto-linked. But you just type in their email, they'll get added to the, uh, the album and they'll be able to add photos to the album as well, which is you know, an awesome way to collaborate on, on different events and scenarios. Um, when you're in the sharing tab, now that you've created that to be a shared album, it's going to show up. You just click the three dots over here to delete if you don't want that album, or you click into it to edit the album and it takes you right back to the same screen that your album showed before. If you wanted to add more people to the album, you can either click it up here or you could come down over to this plus sign down here. And then pretty much the same selection of tabs. You have your more options to allow you to create a slideshow, download the photos in the album, edit the album, um, pretty much the name of the album and such. Um, you have multiple options. You can set an album cover specifically. You know, simple options there. But you can also create... You can also view the activity and create different marks. And so if you had, say I had three people in this album all working together, you can come in here and say, hey, does anybody have photos of the Eiffel Tower? That's quite the trip, but the Eiffel, oh, and I probably can't even spell it. <laughs> I can't spell anything right now. Eiffel Tower, you click send and it comes up as a message thread. When you add photos, it shows up as a message thread saying Turner Sutton just added these photos. If I were to add another one, click add photo here and then select from computer and then say I were to add, let's go, where's a good one here? Oh, that's a good one. Click choose. Now it's going to upload another photo straight to the or straight to the album instead of just to the catalog. Just like that. Now it's going to show up in this thread that I added another photo to the album. And anybody that's a part of this album is going to see that information. That is the activities tab. Um, in order to add more photos, just like I just did, you use this tab. And then you can also order prints straight from Google Photos, which is you know really easy and efficient. It's not super elaborated or super expanded, and so you really still have limited options, and you still have to go pick it up at whatever they print it. And so I don't highly recommend using their print store, but it still is an option if you're trying to save time. 
If you head on over to the print store, it's really easy and and kind of streamlined to see. It allows you to order photo books, photo prints, and for some reason, they're you know advertising specifically canvas prints um, from a very very cheap price, which worries me a little bit. But uh, usually, Google is pretty good about their quality, so it should be totally fine. Um, Albums is the next section, which I've already briefly talked about, but it does organize things. As you can see, as you add more photos to your library, it can recognize different faces, like I said before, and eventually as you get more people that you photograph and add to here, you'll be able to just classify all the photos that, that it recognizes their face from. Um, if you add locations to all your photos, you can see photos from different places, just really easily and quickly. Things, and so for example, Tucker right here is holding a basketball. He can you, you view it because of the fact that he's holding basketball. It's, it's, that, it's that simple. Um, and then utilities is the next tab below. Uh, it gives you the ability to create collages and animations. And if you have videos that you've uploaded, you can also create movies. And the backing up photos option right here down below is actually pretty cool, but it can be risky if you have limited internet. And so do keep that in mind. It's a little easier and more common to do on your phone um, because any photo that you take on your phone is going to be automatically backed up and, and done through there. But we'll get to that here in just a quick second. Real quickly, let's go ahead and go to the collage tab because that's what we're kind of working on right now is photos more than video. But if you were to click a few different photos that I've taken, click create a collage from these photos, this is how simple it is. Wait for this to create it real quick, it takes just a second, boom, it's automatically created a collage and then all your collages are going to be organized in your photos catalog. And so it's taking me back up to the photos and this is a new photo that it's created. And so super awesome, super easy and streamlined. If I head back to albums, I can head over to um, collages and now that photo is there. If I were to head back to utilities, I could create another collage just by selecting what photos that I wanted. And I surprisingly, I can actually make a collage from a collage, which might be kind of messy, but uh, super easy, quick to use. Not something that I would use too much because I use Photoshop and such to create a little bit more articulated ca uh, collages and mainly for printing designs. Um, but that's only because I do this for a living. But um, if you switch on over to archive, we've already talked about that. And then trash, we've already talked about that as well. Um, that is the gist of how the homepage on the web browser works. Um, super, super simple. It really isn't too complicated. You can kind of mess with things as, as you see fit. But uh, let's go ahead and move over to my tablet. All right, guys, we are now on my iPad Pro. Um, it shouldn't matter what tablet that you are on. Everything is going to be fairly similar from, from layout to layout. I know on Google tablets, you'll be going to the Google Play Store or Samsung tablets. Um, and so very simple. I've already downloaded the application, but if you hadn't, you would just open your App Store or Play Store, type in Google Photos, just as I have above already, um, and just select the download button right there, which in my case, I've already downloaded the application. So I'm just going to go ahead and select open. It's going to take me over to the application. Um, I'm not going to spend that much time on these because it, it, it is very, very simple. Um, and it mimics a lot of the application beforehand. Um, right now, or the uh, web application online, but right now what you're looking at is not all of the photos that I have uploaded to Google Photos. What you're looking at is the photos that are on my phone, or my tablet in this case. And so what it's doing is it's accessing your entire library so you can easily upload or back up or add photos from your photo library to Google Photos. And so that's what you're going to see right here. Um, a lot of my professional photos are snippets of behind the scenes and whatnot. Um, if you click on the search button, it's going to show you um, just kind of a navigation style screen. Very, very self-explanatory to the most extent. Uh, it's going to show you, you know, it's, everything's kind of labeled fairly easily. Um, people, as I had mentioned before, it's going to recognize faces. And so if I had more photos in my Google Photos library and it had recognized a repetition of their faces, it would organize that for me. Um, same things right into the things option. It actually even titled it right there for me, basketball. 
It literally recognized the fact that he had a basketball. That is super intelligent programming. Um, but it automatically does that. So you don't have to go into your settings or figure it out, figure out how to set it up. It's automatic. And now down below, again, a little bit more of a navigation tab. Um, your favorites recently added. It's going to categorize the different kinds of photos um, or video versus photo screenshots, that kind of thing. It's going to give the the ability to look at your collages if you have videos that you've uploaded. It's a very simple video editing software. Obviously, you know, Google's not going to be um, a professional software, but it's going to allow you to throw some snippets together really, really quickly if you're wanting some easy stuff. Um, and then animations I'm not going to talk about because you really don't need to get into that for, for the purpose of what, what I'm talking um, about Google Photos for. Um, so that is literally all of the, to the extent for the search tab. The search tab is just a navigation tab. Um, allows you to navigate through your photo libraries. Um, you go search, simple. I'm not even going to bring that one up. Uh, this little icon that you're going to see in the top right is screen share. That is if you have maybe a, a Google um, Chromecast or something of that sort um, that Google can is already integrated with, or you have a Samsung TV maybe that it can throw your screen onto your TV. Um, I won't personally use that. I use Apple AirPlay right into, um, let's see, oh, I don't do it very often on my iPad. So it, it typically is set up right here for my phone. Um, but yeah, it's that simple. One other thing that I do want to go ahead and, and let you guys know about the navigation screen here is on the left top corner, it goes your activity. Um, or I'm sorry. Nope, my bad. One thing I do want to go ahead and bring to you guys' attention is the sharing um, icon over here in the top left of the screen. Uh, so for example, that shared album that I had created on my laptop, it actually is already here. I just got to select this is, I can't type apparently, but this is for a test. It's going to show all of the photos and contributing members over here. If I were to add one, I could easily simply add one. Um, just like that, all of my contacts. Uh, you could also order photos from here as well. Photo book prints or canvas prints. They're very limited to their selection. Their quality is, you know, I have no idea. I've never ordered one through there. Um, if coming just from me speaking, you guys are fairly local. If you guys need a professional print or a print of any sort ordered in a way that you're going to be confident about the quality, just give me a phone call. Um, I'll leave my contact information with, uh, with Leon, and I will be here in the video while this is streaming. So uh, just let me know, and I can help you guys out pretty easily there. But this is also going to give you access to the activities menu right here. If you click down at the bottom, and it doesn't really show you how well that I tapped that, but that little bottom strip at the bottom at the bottom. Yep, I'm going to reiterate that for some reason, but it's going to show you your activities. Um, my message that I had sent, whoever uploads a photo activity that wise, same thing as I had shown you on the computer, but that's your access point for that. Uh, and then don't always forget your more options tab. Those three dots give you just, you know, quick, quick options that you can access from other parts of the application as well. So I'm going to go ahead and head back here, get out of the sharing tab and switch over to the library tab where Google's going to try to sell you on prints one more time. They're at the top. Just ignore that unless you want maybe something just quick and easy. I do believe you have to pick up at Walgreens, though, so it's not like you get it delivered to your front door. Um, I wouldn't trust my word on that completely. Do your research. Um, like I said, I, I order my prints through my own services uh, as a photographer. But again, your favorites, your utilities, your archive, and your trash. Another navigation selection. Not much different because you can access those very similar, your favorites and your recently added right here, um, but to access your archived and trash right there. Then all of your albums, because the albums is the center point around Google Photos. It's how it organizes every single um, selection of photos that you have. You can't really do anything else besides an album, but it's simplistic and straight to the point. Really easy to stay organized. Everything's going to be dated because of the way that your phone and tablets are um, cameras record the date and time as you take those photos and then you upload them. That metadata goes with that photo. Uh, so yeah, pretty simple. Um, over here in the top right corner, you see that little T? That takes you over to the settings. Um, your backup right there says my backup is off. And what Google Photos allows you to do is keep a, a constant backup of all of the photos that you're going to take 
or upload. Uh, and so in this, in this case, take on your phone. So if you were to take a new photo on your phone, you say you just took some photos of your grandkids or your kids or your niece and your nephew or something of that sort and didn't even want to deal with going over to Google Photos right away. It's going to automatically register that a new photo was taken. It's going to upload it to Google Photos for you automatically, and you're going to have a constant backup that you're going to be able to go in and organize later. The reason I don't do this, or I wouldn't do this, is uh, because I'm in limited internet. If I lived in a little bit more in the city, maybe even a little bit more towards Coeur d'Alene, uh, where I had a constant unlimited internet stream, then I'd probably do this because it doesn't cost a lot to um, upgrade your storage base as we had gone over before. Really, really easy, really simple, and really, really cheap. Um, and I always, I love backups, but a lot of my professional photos are backed up in two to three different locations um, depending on the, intent or the, the prioritization of the shoot. And so I organize the photos that I take a little bit differently there. That is it for the iPad application. Very straightforward and very similar to the phone application. I'm going to go ahead and uh, take it over to the phone here in just a second just to show you how the layout works, but it is going to be nearly identical, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on that. Uh, if you guys have any questions, just go ahead and raise your hand as, as Zoom lets you do that, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, guys, we are now on my iPhone XS Max. Like I said before, it shouldn't matter from platform to platform or from phone type to phone type. Uh, you're going to have a Play Store or an App Store to download the application on. Um, in my case, I'm just going to swipe down. I already searched for the App Store. You click on it, you search Google Photos, which I've already typed in, and you click the download icon to where mine says open since I've already downloaded it. It's going to take me right over to the application, which is very similarly laid out and it's from the iPad application because they're pretty much the same, same application. You're going to have your screen share option. You're going to have your shared album option in that top left corner. You're going to have your settings option and the, the T in that top right corner. You're going to have all of the photos that are on the screen right now are pulled from my photo library. So they're not photos that I brought in already into Google Photos intentionally. They're just showing me the photos that are on my phone. Here's a fun little video for you guys. I can't believe they're doing it. Are you uh, the do geese this? had yeah. been yeah. a little bit more friendly to one of my clients than before, so I took a quick video. Wow. But um, you head over to the search tab here. It's going to be identical to the iPad application, a navigation tab. It's going to show you your different identified faces, your different identified things, your favorites, your recently added. It's going to differentiate between screenshots, selfies, videos, and etc your creations that you've built, your movies that you've thrown together on here, because it does have a little movie software, um, your collages, the animations like I'm not going to get through, uh, and, and that's it right there. That's the search tab. Head over to your library, same thing. Your print store is going to be at the top, which I just now noticed they do ship at least the canvas prints. It says in there in the text that I missed on the iPad. Um, your favorites, your utilities, your archive and trash, just like the iPad. And just to clarify utilities, because I don't know if I skipped across that on the, on the uh, laptop, you tap into utilities, it's going to give you the ability to create all of those creations that you could organize on your search tab. Your animations, collages, movies, um, and all of that fun stuff. And you're going to have all of the albums that sync across from platform to platform or from device to device and uh, from the website that you can access on the laptop. So it's all in the cloud. Um, but yep, that simple. It's the same design from tablet to phone, and I would assume very, very similar from Apple to Samsung, which I have done a little bit of research for you guys, and I didn't notice much of a difference from a quick glance. So, all right, that is it for the Google Photos quick tour. Um, the reason that you would use Google Photos one of the main reasons is to constantly have an evenly synced set of your photos. So iPhotos does it fairly well, but it doesn't do it amazing. It doesn't do it perfectly. Sometimes I have photos on my phone that I don't have on my iPad, and it's difficult. I have to airdrop from one to the other. Um, with Google Photos, if you have the backup option turned on, it'll automatically sync all of the photos. You just have everything in every place. You can organize them throughout the albums and, and whatnot there. It's, it's just really, really simple. It's really streamlined, really easy to use, user-friendly, and it's not going to overwhelm 
you if you're just wanting the simplistic application, if you're just wanting to get it done. And so, all right, let me know if you guys have any questions.